Guys, Barco is finally announced. Atlanta United have ended the saga. He's going to be in Atlanta. That Barco train is coming. That Barco train is coming. What's going on, Five Strike fam? I'm AJ, this is Grego, and we're here for a transfer special because Barco Watch has officially ended. Before we get into it, make sure to hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button and never miss a video. So guys, Ezekiel Barco is officially a Five Strike, and this is fantastic news as the transfer fee has gone through and Independiente have finally relieved us of the saga. Atlanta United and Ezekiel Barco have signed the paperwork and the way they announced it, disrupting the MLS Super Draft, just like how we're disrupting MLS on a whole, is quite the showstopper today. You know, the transfer fee was reportedly 15 million, which it absolutely breaks the uh, the MLS transfer record. And uh, you know, the 30% uh, sell-on fee after that for the first two years uh, seems like a reasonable amount. Uh, what do you think? Ezekiel Parco brings to the team uh, for 2018. He brings another option as far as creativity, speed. Uh, keep, it keeps our, our our attack probably the most fa the fastest in the league. Yeah. And anyone who dares to come at us in the bins or even on the road is going to have to bring their bring their lungs because it's going to take a lot just to keep up with us. Absolutely, no, that's very true. Um, yeah, in terms of you know, like what he brings, he's able to break down like deep lying defenses. Like that's gonna be really really important because we struggled with that last year. Yeah. Um, and so you know, for him to also you know, he showed his like you know both footedness uh, in the Copa Sudamericana with uh, that left foot assist into the box. Uh, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see where he plays. Where do you think he's going to play? Um, I think the immediate spot will probably be uh, over the left wing where Asad used to play. I think the interesting thing is that uh, he could also play uh, center mid. Mm -hmm. He can play uh, behind the striker. So mm -hmm. it definitely needs a lot of options as far as, you know, if it like in the event if Armoran was ever out or, right. or if uh, Diablo was out. Like he can he can move around and right. definitely leave uh you know depending on who we have on behind him mm -hmm. we don't miss a beat right. and uh, it, it it keeps us dangerous so mm -hmm. uh, it definitely should uh should be very interesting yeah definitely um and for you know maybe the existent incumbent players um uh, you know I know you have some thoughts on Andrew Carlton maybe being uh, really affected by this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think that just given uh, Assad moving on, I thought that just given the the progress that, that Carlton had, it definitely, mm -hmm. you know, you would you would have thought that the, the natural progression would have been for for Carlton to uh, to move into that role. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's tough, especially given that the, that Barco is not that much older than it's than, true. than Carlton. Yeah. So it definitely leaves you know some questions as far as. You know what? What's Carlton's future uh, uh, with the team? Because obviously, mm -hmm. you know, you want to see him play, and of course, you want yeah. to see you want to see him succeed. Right. And uh, hopefully, the opportunities will still be there. You know. Yeah. And, and if and if not, you know, hopefully, um, at the very least, you know, he continues to develop um, mm -hmm. either with uh, either with the reserve or possibly even with the United United two. Right. And mm -hmm. and uh, we'll, we'll see him flourish that way. Right. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's definitely going to be plenty of opportunities for Andrew Carlton. Uh, still, because yeah, I mean, with Atlanta United too, as you mentioned, and maybe spelling Miguel Miron, uh, spelling you know Barco on the wing, like there's gonna be you know unfortunately injuries. There's gonna be you know yeah. rotation for all the the cup games and you know stuff like that coming up. Uh, so I think you know he'll be okay. Like he will get his playing time, especially at Atlanta United too, um, to really show out. I think. He and maybe Brandon Vasquez are maybe the headliners for Atlanta United too. Quite possible, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Depending on you know what what arrangement well uh, we have uh, as far as like how we call and recall players from from uh, from the Sega team, yeah. Because uh, definitely, I think the biggest thing, especially given their ages, you want to keep in mind is that they still have to grow in that in that mm -hmm. way, being a position where when they are. 
uh, needed with the first team. Right. They're, they're ready. Mm-hmm. And um, and obviously with uh, with Atlanta United too, they'll probably be, work, be employing a similar uh, formation that we had with the first team. Mm-hmm. And so the, the transition will, will be seamless and you know when the time comes, they'll be ready. True. And I think we do need to think about like the, the preparation of Miguel Miron eventually leaving. Um, it's I know, yeah. It's you know something that Tata even mentioned uh, in the off season that you know Miguel Miron eventually will move to Europe. Uh, I think it's a it's the worst kept secret. Um, and you know I think with Barco moving possibly into that number ten role, and then you know Carlton maybe coming into the the team that way. There's going to be plenty of opportunities for all these these players that uh, are you know very very talented and showing a lot of things. Um, yeah, so I, I think let's get back to Barco and what you know the immediate impact this is into you know not just Atlanta United but MLS as a whole. Uh, you know, it's for one, it uh, you know has already you can see this like other teams have already started to buy teenage phenoms yes. you know from south america and so you know maybe ours took probably the longest but uh other teams are doing this as well maybe off the heels of uh, learning that we we're doing that um and then i think also you know the you know the style of play that he brings the the chance creation um his just ice coldness in front of goal you know, I think I like that word, man. Ice cold, ice cold, ice Yeah, um, I think I just made that up because I don't think that's a real word. But uh, <laughs> but it's uh, you know when he's slotting in penalties in the Copa Sudamerica final, mm-hmm. like that's just uh, you know this guy is just very very a cool customer. Yeah, I think definitely, especially at his age, you know, to have that type of moxie, you know, says, says a lot, you know, as far as yeah. where he is right now and obviously where he, where he wants to go. Right. Um, I think as far as where, obviously, teams are going to look at us and, and, and suddenly realize that, you know, one, there's a lot of talent in South America that's ripe out there, you know. Not everyone, not everyone jumps to Europe right away, and I think mm-hmm. that there's definitely an avenue to where there's tons of South American kids that that will take the opportunity to come to America, you know, sharpen up their skills even more. And if they do decide to go to Europe, fine. And if they don't, of course, you, you have a another avenue here where you can make some pretty good money and, and exactly. feature pretty well. So right. I think that uh, a, a lot of uh, MLS teams will probably take the initiative and say, hey, you know, this is an avenue to, that we can go and mm-hmm. not always have to rely on uh, overspending on the the older veteran yeah. uh, players from from Europe, mm-hmm. and look, hey, we could we could actually you know build for the future and have a guy that you know even if he's not going to be here long term, mm-hmm. he's a guy that that will be able to grow and say, hey, he made his mark here. Exactly, and it makes for more exciting soccer as well. The product is you know more attractive to uh, you know fans and casual fans and you know people that might be interested in the sport. So you know this is all very very good stuff that progresses the league instead of you know you know the the whole stigma of it being a retirement league is you know i think kind of waning now so. yeah absolutely i think that uh you know to, in order for mls to build you have to look towards the future and right. obviously the future is the youth and yeah. and wherever it is whether it be through the uh the academies that are still growing whether mm-hmm. it be through uh the kids in south america i think mm-hmm. that you know and especially just giving this to the, the fans in general, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's skewing young to begin with. So right. it's very important for MLS to, to take advantage of that mm-hmm. and say, hey, you know, we are the team, the, the league of the future. We mm-hmm. have the clubs of the future. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're all looking to go together. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, it may not be immediately the, uh, you know, United States youth, but, you know, these youth playing day in, day out, practicing against you know uh really high caliber talent yeah. that just you know the the whole saying steel sharpens steel really applies and so in comparison to yamil Assad, barco definitely isn't as defensive as Assad. so it's going to be uh something that we're going to miss for sure 
Uh, Assad, you know, had two tackles a game, essentially. Um, he had 1.2 interceptions a game. Like, this is a guy that had a high, high work rate uh, and won the ball very, very high on the pitch. And that allowed us to, you know, get a counter from there uh, in their final third. Like, that really paid dividends. You know, I, I think that, obviously, Assad's work rate was, I, th- I personally speaking, over, over the, uh, the course of the season, I, I definitely grew a, a larger appreciation for Assad because, yeah. you know, even if, you know, he wasn't scoring, like he was putting in work, you know, yeah. tracking back and defending. It's a total package, yeah. And, and really, you know, keeping... You know, keep keeping the screws on 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 the, on the opposing team. You know, right. pretty much at all times, where you mm-hmm. had to keep an eye on him at all times. Right. I think that with Barco, obviously, you know, given his his natural speed, mm-hmm. it's something that that can't compare to a size. So hopefully, yeah. I think it's a matter of you know, uh, instilling the the mindset of you know, keep make sure that you're tracking back, even though when we're not in attack, you know, when mm-hmm. when it's time to defend, right. you know, you're you're still focusing and in tune with the game, and hopefully. Right. You know, when those opportunities do come, mm-hmm. the uh, the top the opportunity to attack right. mm-hmm. will be will be there, and he'll mm-hmm. be able to to work his magic there with you know, on the rest of the guys. Definitely, yeah. And so, you know, I think working with Tata Martino in the pressing system that we do play, uh, I think he'll learn. You know, what Tata wants. At least, you know, if he's being instructed to mark players, uh, he doesn't have to necessarily go in for a tackle. But, um, you know, that will at least, uh, you know, be enough for Atlanta United. Because, uh, yes, we do lose a little bit defensively. Uh, so Garza and, you know, any other left back will have to be relied on a little bit more. Um, you know, maybe they can't venture as far as uh, they did last season uh, forward. So that uh, might be an issue. Yeah, it should be interesting to see how how our formation runs uh, this year. Obviously, you have Nagby, you have Escobar, mm-hmm. and and you have uh, Barco. So that's three new yeah. bases that you have to work into the uh, into mm-hmm. the formation, and it might not be the same as as what we had had mm-hmm. last year. Right. Hopefully, we we have something that uh, will take advantage of, of all of their strengths and uh, and yeah. obviously still keep us pretty dangerous in attack mm-hmm. and and still pretty pretty ironclad in in the, in the back line. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, all the outfield players definitely have pretty good speed, uh, if not really elite speed. And so, you know, the attack and the defense, they're all going to be very, very fast. And, you know, that plays into Tata's system. And it's going to be really, really good going forward. The Parco announcement definitely has made us all very, very excited, very happy. We can't wait to see him play in 2018 uh preseason in nashville is super close about 20 days or so that's uh it's gonna be very very exciting so thank you guys so much for watching in this transfer special of ezekiel barco for grego i'm aj subscribe if you haven't already smash a like and we'll see you in the next video